Hey, what's going on, travelers? What is going on? It's Ricky Ventures and Marlon Madden, and we are back with you for another episode of the Success Journey Show. Marlon, what's good, bro? How you doing, man? Woo! Enjoying myself. Style. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. That, that's um. That's all. Ric Flair. Yeah, Woo! Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, what's good, dude? What's going on, man? Nothing much. I'm um, just, just um, you know, sometimes you got to change it up in terms of the way you are. Uh, you know, somebody said Donovan said to me today. He goes, you know, sometimes when you're trying to talk to somebody, you 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 have a Michael Jordan approach with somebody that needs a LeBron approach. Mm -hmm. They're both gonna get the same results, you know, so to say, so to speak. But sometimes the approach so. I've uh, definitely, um, this episode is going to be, at uh, these pe people, listen, just listen to this episode and take it in. It has the funny parts, it has its low, high parts, it has its low parts, but this episode right here is going to, is going to confirm some of the things that you have been looking for, because tonight, when we listen to this episode, and we did the episode before we did the intro, so this episode confirms some things to. for us, we yeah. needed it. When it came to the um to some of our stuff that we've been doing, so yeah. you know yeah. it picked yeah. us up. Yeah, yeah. what about you? Rick? Definitely picked us up, man. Because I tell you, I, I needed I needed that energy from this episode. If I if I would have we would have did the intro first, man. I would have been half sleep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to do this, man. It's a uh, it's been it's been a good good day, good weekend, good week. You know, everything's been going great, man. Uh, but today I was just it's got tired, man. I got tired. Got um you know, dealing with different, um, how, how, how do I say it? Different projects, you know, and uh, making sure that, you know, you're fulfilling the requirements of the projects and everyone's happy. So, uh, you know, it's not always glitz and glamour. Sometimes it's, man, miss the mark. You got to go back to the drawing board and make sure we, you know, make some corrections and adjustments and hit, hit it back again. So it's all about how you respond to it, right? You know, it's not about, how you, you know, getting all the glories about, hey, when, when things don't go right, how do I respond to it? You know, Correct. So. I, before, I don't want to take a lot of time on jumping the thing, but today, at some point today, I was watching the Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I incriminate myself. At some yeah. point today, I was watching the Floyd Mayweather and Shane Mosley um, fight. And if you never watched that fight, watch it again. Yeah. Roy jo Flo Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather got hit twice in the same round, super hard, mm -hmm. and everybody thought he was going to go down. But mm -hmm. watch his face; he was calm. And when you hear him talk about it, he says, "When you get hit with that big shot, the whole room is spinning." But when you watch him, you're like, "This guy said the whole room is spinning," but he knew exactly what to do to get out of the situation he was in in order to still maintain and be in the fight. Mm. So just like Ricky's saying, man, that 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 even keel, well you're gonna hear it in the in, 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 sometimes sometimes you go up on a high, everybody want to ride the high, then when you drop, you drop so low that you don't want to go back up or you can't or you can't recreate that high. But if you stay at a even keel and then go on that that natural bell curve and it goes up, sometimes a lot of times or in a lot of instances that's a lot better. So yeah. hey Rick, I'm excited for this episode. I don't know about you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what? Let's jump right into it. Welcome to the Success Journey Show. Let's travel together through the lives of individuals on the road to success. Hey, travelers. We are back with you. Um, and we're here at the favorite segment of our show, like we said, right? Man, we love this part of the show because we have guests from all over the world come and to share their stories. And like we say this a lot of times, man, Marlon and I, we're selfish this, man. We get to meet people from all over, right? And, and, and get their stories and they share them through the world. And we learn the lessons and the nuggets and create relationships and friendships along the way. And today we are excited, excited, super excited to, in to introduce to you Edgar Blazona. Edgar, what's going on, man? How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm good. I'm, I'm glad to be here and and, uh, and and excited for this. What happened, Marlon? What are you laughing about, man? You said it wrong. 
<laughs> you got it right. You said Blazo, no, it's Blazo, nah. nah. I said Blazona, didn't I? Oh I man, I thought I said Blazona, man. I, man. I'm looking at me, tripping up. Man, guess, man, come on, man. You guys know I've been on a streak. How can I mess this up? I gotta do it again. Edgar Blazona. I thought I had that, man. But yo, Edgar, what's going on, man? Thank you for joining us. Sorry for messing up your name, man. I messed up my streak, man. But welcome to the no Success Journey it. Show. I get it. I get it. It's hard. Names are so hard, man. I don't even, sometimes I don't even hear their name when they say it to me. And then later on, I'm like, you got to get put in that awkward position where you don't know their name. Like, oh, no. <laughs> you pronouns. Yeah, my <laughs> wife is over there going like, oh, nice to meet you. I'm Tara. You know, it's like so clear. I don't remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> man thank you so much man it's an honor to have you on our show today um man we we, we got off in the bang man so we know it's going to be an exciting show why don't you share with our travelers around the world a little bit about yourself all right um well i'm um i'm from the bay area um which is a great place to live these days it's like the gold mine here yeah. Um, you know, things are just coming up and big, you know, big giant dot coms and all this money flowing in and out. And, and, uh, you know, since high school, I've been a furniture guy and, you know, I, 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 I was living in, in, uh, in the city, in my own apartment in high school, I, I was living by myself. I started making some furniture, uh, and I, and I ended up, I sold the first piece that I ever made to a little gallery and I made a little bit of money and at the time, man, this is like, you know, I don't know, 35 years ago, 33 years ago, something like that. And I sold it for 400 bucks and I thought that I was rich. I mean, it was, it was big money back then, you know, and, and in all honesty, I've been in the furniture business ever since and grew up a little bit of a hoodlum, you know, a graffiti artist, a, a little punk ass, a little skater, uh, you know, just trying to make make my way, but with a with a keen eye on design, and and that's really kind of how I got my start as a as a designer and and in the furniture business. Mm, uh, wow! Yeah. And he, and he does have a keen eye, ladies and gentlemen. He came on and immediately he did not pay any attention to my drip backdrop. Nothing to pay attention to. <laughs> nothing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the key bookshelf. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, you know, Edgar, man, I um, I put this together eye. myself too, man. I did, this, I, I did this myself too, man. I designed. It's been a year now. Oh, yeah. Looks good. That I, that I did this, man. So I, pr I appreciate it, man. Having a, a fellow uh, builder uh, yeah. uh, on yeah. the show, right? Yeah. Uh, man, yo, so I remember when I. You know, my father, man, he used to always build stuff, man, whether it be shells or doing stuff in the house or getting new, having all these different books about building and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yourself, man, when you're really first getting into it, like, tell me just like your inspirations and, you know, just really, like, really drew yeah. you to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up in a construction family. I, my, my, my parents were in the construction business. Um, they were a little bit minimalist, kind of a little bit, my, my father, especially a little bit of a minimalist modernist kind of guy. And, uh, I remember he, he had an apartment, he remodeled, um, and he made these, these laminate cubes. I guess this would be in the late eighties, right? When, when everything was from mica and laminate and all that. And yeah, he, made, he made, yeah, he made these cubes, you know, it was like a side table and a coffee table that fit perfectly into the corner. And I remember thinking, I, I remember this so clearly. I remember thinking, wow, like he just had that side table made. Like he didn't go buy it or go to 10 stores to try to find something similar. He just had it made. And it, it really never dawned on me. And I, I, like I said, I remember thinking this. It never dawned on me that you could have something made, right? That you didn't have to just take what other retailers we're selling you. You could just dream it up and have it made. And, and, you know, I think you, when you step back and you, and you look at that for a second and, you know, if you had that bookshelf made or designed it, right. Everything around us is made by someone, you know, those pictures mm -hmm. on your wall, you know, I don't think we remember that enough. You know, we, we, we just pick up the cup and drink out of it. Someone touched that in a factory somewhere, or someone made the mold for that or something like that. And, and I, I always found that so interesting. And so, I became a custom furniture maker. And man, I had some crazy ups and downs. It's hard making a living as a custom furniture maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about it, man. I, I, you, you talk, I mean, talk about that 
for making and living off of custom furniture because yeah, you made like you said a little bit, you sold your first week four hundred dollars or you're excited. Yeah. But custom furniture, like you really have to build in a, like a pipeline or a desire for people to really want your stuff because at first it was like a hobby. And you're like, all right, yeah. I built this today or I built that today, you know. So talk about like how yeah. you like, it's a about- hustle. It's a yeah. hustle. You know, I used to, I'd go around and I'd find these objects, right? And I'd find these, you know, pieces of, of broken marble and I'd make these little tables out of them. But I'd, so I'd make all this stuff and I had like a stockpile of stuff, but, but then how do I sell it? Yeah. And I would go in San Francisco and I would go to the bar at night. I would set up outside on the sidewalk at night. I'd have my my tables and my stools. And I would stand out there and I would be selling furniture, taking names. You know, this is pre-cell phone, right? So you got to take people's phone number down. And, yeah. and I was just out there really trying to trying to get my name out there and trying to, you know, sell a stool. And, you know, it put me into some weird, weird positions. It, it, okay. it you know, okay. Someone said to me, oh, are you a custom metal, metal guy? And I said, well, yeah. And they said, well, I work at this, you know, this, uh, s m leather store uh <laughs> south of the market and we're looking for someone to um customize our s m gear wow and I'm, like, and I'm like man okay like I, I i don't know what that is i don't know anything about that but but yes i need to make money and i need to build stuff and <laughs> and you know i'll never forget the first time the you know, this big, big dude, big old dude comes over and I got to like, you know, f- hand fit like a tailor, you know, his gear, you know, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> his bro, you know? <laughs> but oh, man. I had to do it, you know, yeah. and so yeah. it, it was any little thing that you could do to, to, you know, just try to make some money doing, yeah. you know, not have to get a job, not get a real job. Man, I, I'm, I'm, I was thinking, you know, when you're sitting outside the bar, you know, if you did a survey, did you sell more items to people that were coming out of the bar or that were going into the bar? I don't think I sold many items at all. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean but it, you know, I did sell a few things and it, it led to one thing to another. And yeah. I would do the flea markets, you know, we, we set up, they've got these like kind of designery flea markets here and you know, some guy came up to me one time and was like, hey, man, you know, could you cut this? We have this huge, you know, table that goes into a big meeting room and and we can't get it up the elevator. Do you think you could, you know, cut it in half and put some brackets and put it back together? And, and, and I said, yeah, you know, sure, whatever, anything. Right. And so I cut this like, you know, 18 foot table in half. I drove this hoopty car. I had the half of the table on top of the car with my arm out like that half at a time. And I would take it to this, you know, San Francisco, you know, tall building. They had to yep. shut the elevator. They would put this table on top of the elevator and, and bring half up at a time. Well, it turns out that the, the good part about that story is, is that particular guy was an architect and mm. he happened to own the largest modern furniture store in San Francisco. Oh. And so one thing led to another and he kind of became a friend and, and, you know, not far down the line, he let me put, you know, my line in his store. And, wow. uh, you know, I kind of, you know, weaseled my way, got a little press, you know, and all that. And, and that got me going and, and took me to a spot in, in, in my career where, where I still had to hustle, but not, I didn't have to do the street corner anymore. Right. I, I could, I could, you know, I was working with architects and interior designers and I started doing kitchens, a lot of cabinetry, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, that's a tough life. You know, you don't think about that, but pushing wood through a saw day in and day out, you know, first of all, you know, you're going to cut your finger off at one point. It happens to all cabinet makers. If you can get out of the cabinet business without cutting your finger off at some point in your life, you know, you made it. But most people, you know, lose something along the way. And and I remember one day I was pushing wood through the saw, you know, piece after piece after piece, the same thing. And that's that's how you hurt yourself, really. So, yeah, you stop thinking. Yeah, you stop thinking, yep. you know. And I'm thinking about the, you know, lake house that I'm never going to get 
but if I keep doing this, <laughs> like, like, like there's never, there's no way I'm gonna make this into like a lake house. Like, this is not yeah, 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 you know? yeah. And uh, that was a Friday, and Monday I came in and I had two guys working for me, and I said, guys. I'm going to close the shop down. I'm going to go get a real job and I'm going to learn how to build this business and scale it uh, mm-hmm. to a point where, where I can get my lake house, you know, and, and, and that's mm-hmm. what I did. I did that. I, I, um, I made a resume. I gave him my first resume. I handed it off to Pottery Barn. This is oh. back in Pottery Barn's heyday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Them and and uh, took any job to get in the, in the door. You know, they needed a furniture engineer. I'm your man. I'm yeah, your man. Your- I've done it all my life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. That, yo, that is man, phenomenal. Go ahead, Marlon. I don't want to hold it. Before we skip to there, you said something at the intro of your story. When I was in high school, I was living on my own in my apartment. Yeah. Explain that to us, and then we'll go back to um, the, the, now that you closed your, your operation yeah. down and, and, and you go into this company. But I want to hear about that story. Yeah, I was... I was um, I was pretty young, you know, and I look at my, my own kid, you know, I got an 11 year old now, but I, I have a 20 year old also. And I remember when he was 16 and I remember thinking when he was 16, like, could, could you he make it on his own? own? Could you make it on your own? Hell no. Hell no. no. Dude, you don't even know how to clean the bathroom, you know, let alone, <laughs> you know, and so, so yeah, that was, it was tough. You know, I got this apartment, but I had nothing. And I mean, I, I wasn't the, I wasn't, I wasn't who I am now. I didn't have the same morals I have now. You know, I was a little hood and I, you know, I, I was making my way, you know, but, but it wasn't making furniture, you know, and I, I needed, <laughs> I needed something more than, than making furniture. And, 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 uh, and so I did, I, I couldn't afford anything. I, I, I would go to these stores and I would look at the stuff and be like, well, maybe I can make this, you know, and, and uh, and to be honest, you know, I I I as a metal furniture, and I was like, oh, I gotta figure out how to weld. This is pre YouTube, you yeah. know. And I mean, in all honesty, I went down to the welder store and I stole the welder, you know. And I mm. I went home and you know I figured out like how to weld, you know. Like I hope I don't electrocute myself. I don't know what this is gonna do, you know. <laughs> and you know I feel bad about that today. I mean, it was my life then. I I was just trying to get by and not trying to get by, but I was just doing whatever I could to, to advance myself. And I knew, you know, living on my own at 16, I needed more to advance myself than what I was doing at the time. And, what made uh, you move on your own at 16? Where, Cause you said your, your parents yeah. were contractors. Uh, I was, I was living, I, I, my mother, my, my mother and father divorced, although they worked together. And I, I was, I was living, you know, I, my mother was teaching me how to do everything on my own since I was a little kid, you know, clean this, do laundry, cook for yourself, all that. She was teaching me how to be independent. I think it backfired on her a bit, you know, because by the Mm. time I was like 14, you know, I was making lists on, you know, what did I need to move out? You know, what, what sort of like, I need two towels, I need four plates, I need, you know, all those kind of things to try to figure that out. And, you know, by the time I was 16, I was like, I'm out, you know, and, and my parents were, you know, middle class, you know, but it wasn't working there either. Right. And so like, okay, let's see, let's see what you can do. And, and, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of not so good, a little bit there. And then, and then, you know, I kind of moved into, you know, a, a work hustle and trying to figure out, you know, how to make it. And, and, uh, you know, by the time I got to Pottery Barn, you know, I, I was, Gosh, maybe I was about 22, maybe something like that. Maybe, I don't know, 24. And and this was the big leagues, right? This is, I mean, this is back in the Pottery Barn days when when they were the thing, you know. You mm-hmm. this was this, this was the thing. And and there was the biggest store. No one had ever really had done this lifestyle thing before. And like all of a sudden, everyone was like friends, TV shows, talking yeah, about yeah, pottery yeah, barn, yeah. You, you know, all of that. And and this was an exciting time, but I created some problems there. You know, I needed to go to the factory. I got hired as a as a um, as a furniture engineer. Well, man, I'm not going to get to go to the factories as a furniture engineer to figure out what a real factory looks like. So 
I started pointing out these problems, you know, and I would say, okay, well, look at this. This is a big problem you got here. Well, I can fix it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't know how to fix it, but I would say that, you know, because <laughs> okay, you know, they put me on this, you know, business class flight, you know, to China, you know, and I'd go fix this like $4 million problem, you know, I, and so, you know, it was exciting, but, but if I blew it, it was over, you know, the kind of, you know, the, the curtain would be pulled back, but I did it and I believed in myself and I fixed it and, and I would fix these things and I became the fixer. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and I no longer was the furniture engineer. I was the fixer. And, and I would, I would pick problems that I thought I had a chance at fixing. And that, that was really the key, right. was, where are the things that I can maybe fix? I will point them out and and um, and then head off to China and fix. And and lo and behold, then I got to see what a real factory looked like. And man, what a yeah. difference between a real factory making furniture for Pottery Barn, you know, than my little garage shop. You know, the big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Talk talk so, about even in in China. I mean, yeah, the difference in just manufacturing versus even mainstream here in the United States, like I mean, yeah. even that that difference, I mean, the way their operations are are it's just streamlined, it's just different, right? And yeah, people are different. So, Talk about what that that culture shock was for you as you went over. Yeah, there. boy, culture shock. I don't know this show might be a little too PG for me to tell you the the yeah. whole truth because there's a lot going on there that that you know behind the scenes that the that the uh, textile, the old textile dudes did, you know, they, they were the first ones going over there and, and, you know, having stuff made and, and they created this weird white man, you know, fat guy culture over there that, mm. you know, you were, you were to be treated, you know, a certain way and, and, and all that. And, and, and again, you know, coming from the Bay area and, and, you know, uh, mainly female driven company, um, it was very different, you know, and so, so, and right, right when I went there, right in, in that era of time, they changed this rule, it's called anti-dumping, and it's because China was basically selling furniture to the United States for like almost at cost, what it costs them to make, so it was really, really inexpensive, and, and so we all, you know, got addicted to this you know, $99 coffee table and that sort of thing. And, and so they, they changed the rule there and they, and, and they made bedroom furniture super taxed, like 40%. Mm -hmm. So the bedroom furniture industry moved to um, uh, like Indonesia, right? Where, where there wasn't that rule. And so getting back to your question, you know, in China, there's the machines are streamlined. At that point, they were just getting these German machines and they were, you know, very nice and on point. Whereas like Vietnam and Indonesia, you know, they still had like a hundred dudes standing behind like a motor with a with a blade on it, you know, mm. taking piece at a time and the next guy cutting it the next way. And, you know, so it was such a contrast between, you know, each country, um, you know, and learning the cultures was very different. And, you know, being respectful of the Chinese guy, you know, and, and how that, you know, here, here's some, here's some blood pudding for you to eat. This is our, you know, our, this is like the best thing that I can give you, you know, and, and you're sitting there like, no, nah, man, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, and, and all that. And it's just a different, you know, world there, you know, and, and a different world in each of these other countries. Talk about Matt. your mind. Um, yeah, just your mindset of hey, I'm really just trying to get my beach house. I mean, my lake house. Yeah, and and, and you're you're there going through this process, going through this with the blood pot. <laughs> you're like, man, yeah. like, did, yeah, exactly. Did you did you did you did you feel you feel like you were getting closer to your yes, family? yeah, yes, and I'll and I'll tell you how that plays out even uh -huh. even today, right? Um. I was just trying to get in front of people, right? I was trying to, I was trying to put myself into a position where I could be around people who were, who maybe were already doing it or had, had the tools that I needed to, to, to get me going. You know, now think about this. I've been in the furniture business now for like, you know, 30 years, 30, four years, something like that. So I'm 50, you know, and, and, you know, going all the way back to high school. So, 
you know, that's a long time. And, and along the way, I've met a lot of people. And, um, you know, in Thailand, I convinced a factory owner to take my first orders. And, you know, and one guy owed me a bunch of money from royalties, but he owed the fact the factory owed him money. And I was able to like parlay that into somehow me ended up getting a bunch of furniture for free, basically, you know, and, <laughs> and, and so that started my first company, my first real company. That's how I, how I started. And so I've always kept my eye on that prize. And you can do that when you stay in the same industry over and over and over again and, and keep your eye, you know, on that same prize. And, you know, I wasn't climbing my way to the top. That, that really wasn't my goal. My goal was to be around people who could who could make me successful and and who could even make me successful is too far. Who could, you know, provide the pieces, right? right? If I'm gonna be a, if I'm gonna get that lake house, you know, I need to to be in a place where I can buy enough furniture to be able to sell it, to be able to afford a lake house. And so how do I get around those people? And, and that's yeah. really what my goal was at that point. Yeah. Now when you say lake house, right? That's, that's, we're talking about Bay area. We're talking about lake house on the, on the Bay or lake house and some type of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Not, not to give a point of, I'm just trying to show people like the, the size of the dream, because I know people it's, it's different in different areas, right? Yeah, you get in the lake house in Georgia. Yeah. It's, it's expensive, but not, the big. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this yeah. is the land of, you know, the gold rush, uh, but yeah. it is an expensive price to pay uh, right. to be here. And, yeah, and uh, it's taken a long time. I, I do have a place with the dock. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's, you know, I had to buy the cheapest one on the block and remodel it myself and all that. But you know what? Now it's the best one on the block. So, yeah, yeah. you know, but, yeah. but it's not, you know, the big fancy lake, but it's, it's, you know, it's what I could make myself. It's what I could, it's I what that. I could build. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's what I could do. Before Mono goes, I got a side question real yeah. quick. Bay area. I can't forget this. Warrior fan. At all? You know, Oh man, he's not. A honestly, uh, to me, in, in all honesty, I had such fun growing up watching Reggie Miller square off against Michael Jordan. And I yeah. have never found the same basketball since. You're so right. You're so right. You're, just, you're right. You're, so you're right. right. Yeah, you're so right. It, you know, Michael Jordan, he had <laughs> something to him, you know, and, and, you know, I don't know if the Warriors, it doesn't, it doesn't excite me like that, like it did then. Thank you for listening to the Success Journey Show. Please follow us on our social media on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at the Success Journey Show. Also, check out our website at thesuccessjourneyshow.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the show. Doesn't give you that feeling. I was telling my son this week. I was like, just tell, ask me who's better here and there. I said, listen, man. I, all I can tell you is that there was just a feeling when you watched <laughs> yeah. that. Michael Jordan, I don't care. Oh Michael goodness. Jordan, when you watch the old Nick, when you watch the old Pacers, yeah. when you watch even the Rockets, when you watch all these yeah. people, like you just, you just have like the yeah. feeling of true competition, yeah. true like, oh man, this is my team. Now they just, it's not, Nick's it's not Pacers, the same. Nick's Pacers with Spike Lee out of the oh, floor. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know? hey, I don't know if Spike, if Spike, if Spike Lee helped, or or what? Because sometimes they'll kill the team just because yeah. they wanted to shut Spike Lee up. <laughs> yeah, no, you know it helped me because I became a Reggie Miller fan. I was like, <laughs> that dude off the court. I <laughs> uh, love it. Go ahead, Barley. Um, so when I'm listening to your story, I don't know. I don't remember the guy's name. I, mean, I don't know if so we can look up Rick. Um, I mean, Jay, if you can flash it across the street or whatever it is. Um, catch me if you can. You ever seen that story? Oh, and I, uh-uh. Okay, so Cash Me If You Can is a guy that he, when he say same thing like you when he was young, he kind of went off and he he became a pilot but never flew. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. Never yeah. flew. Yeah. Um, did all the different things to get the big business meetings and everything. Yeah. So kind of like how you're talking about. The only thing is that you knew how to make the furniture. That's why when you got there, you didn't know you could fix the problem. 
Yeah. And, but when you're flying over to China, when you said you pointed out that problem and you're flying over to China, you had some kind of resident knowledge of what would happen when you look at the what, what whatever the problem set was. It's interesting you say that, right? Because and and this still holds true today, right? I've been in a lot of factories in my life, but you know, I don't know how to run that big mega machine. And frankly, I don't know how to even run a business with 3000 people or whatever. I don't I don't know how to do that. And but a lot of the things that you learn as a maker and as a builder still apply even though you still got to go through that big machine. What I didn't know on the flight on the way there was what was that mega machine going to look like, right? What, like, maybe you don't even touch it. Maybe you just, you know, it just squirts out a thing, you know, and who knows like what that is. Cause I was so, I didn't know. So the gamble that I was taking, first of all, I, I, I had the confidence, right. And, you know, there's a lot of people who've, who've made it in our, in our world. Right. And they kind of faked it to the top, but the ones who faked it to the top and just faked it the whole time, eventually get caught. Right. And, it, let's say they fake it to the make it. Some just don't never make it. <laughs> or they make it, but then it comes out later that they didn't know what they were doing and they, yeah, they yeah, it down. Yeah. So it's a weird thing when you come from a that confidence level, like I'll figure it out. You got to take that risk, you know, but I wasn't risking too much. Right. That I that I I was going to fall down. You know, I, I couldn't be a CEO of a, you know, a 3000 company, people company. Right. I, I couldn't do that today. Right. I, I don't even know that I would say that I could do that. Right. Because that's so out of my league. I, I wouldn't know how to do it. But I could I could tell you I could run a 100 people company, you know, with confidence. And 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 so that's a I think that's a fine line when you kind of, you know, fake your way through. And I, I think it, it comes we, we call it butt spray holder, right? Literally, that's a term <laughs> in, my, in, my, in my group, right? I will be the butt spray holder for you, sir. Like whatever your lowest job is to get me in that room, I'll hold the butt spray, you know, just waiting. And, and that will get me in the room. But once I'm in the room, I can prove myself enough that I, I no longer will have to have that job. Mm, yes, sir. Now talk about the company you created and how you yeah. put it together and yeah. why you put it together and how you eventually um, yeah. sold it on. So I, I mentioned it in the very beginning, how I kind of traded some, some debt to me for some furniture. And I started this company, True Modern, and, and, and it was a wholesale business. And while I was there, and you know, creating that, the second boom came through San Francisco, all this money being handed out. And I thought, okay, how can I participate this time? I, I, I haven't been able to participate because no one's going to invest in a furniture store. And these things called direct to consumer companies dtc started to come up about companies like casper mattress dollar shave club um you know those guys were early direct to consumer businesses and i thought okay how can i how can i figure out how to make a furniture company a direct to consumer furniture company and i i started testing stuff on my own site the true modern site could i sell direct and i could uh, i started making furniture by the inch you know can I can I make it by the inch? Do people want that custom by the inch? And I proved those things out. And so I created this company called Benchmade Modern. Uh, you know, we make it on the bench. You know, Benchmade furniture is a is a saying of like it's handmade, but we're gonna do it in a modern way. And I set out to raise money. And I uh, how you know where am I gonna find a guy to invest in? You know, and this is another hack, right? I I had to figure out like how could I how can I raise money? You know? Uh, so I listened to this podcast by Jason Calacanis called this week in startups. Mm. And he was an investor and all he did was talk about how to raise money. Right. He would, he would tell you these tricks. And I, I listened to like three years of his podcast and I would take notes and I mm. decided, you know what, I'm going to get him to be my first investor. I'm going to use his words against him yeah, yeah. and, and use it to be get his his investment. So he talked about this fancy club that he 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 uh you know he was always at at the time in San Francisco. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get into this club. You're right. So I'm just, you know, this dude, I'm like, okay, you know, I apply for the the whole thing, you know, what what are you gonna bring to this club? You know, I'm I'm a furniture maker, designer. I'm gonna you know, bring a different <laughs> feel, right? Gosh, to this, yeah. I gotta I'm prove. Sorry. Yeah, right. Pottery bar back in the day, right? <laughs> Damn. So, so 
I would go there every day and I would, he would be over there and I would sit by him. And he always talked about, you have to give something to get something, right? Don't just come up and ask for money. You know, there's that saying, you know, ask for money, get advice, ask for advice, get money, right? Mm. So he would throw these big conferences and I was, you know, I was trying to figure out what's my angle. And I would, I thought, okay, well, I watch him on these conferences. He has all these big guys come and sit down, Elon at the time, you know, all these really, you know, famous entrepreneurs that had, you know, sold their companies and made tons and they always sat in rental furniture. So I had this, I had this email all queued up like, Hey, I'd love to go to your conference, but I can't afford to go. However, I noticed that your guys are always sitting in rentals. Maybe they'd like to sit in something better, but some custom furniture. I'll trade you the furniture for the stage to, to come to your conference. And, and I waited to the right moment and, and I sent him this email and he immediately responded. In fact, I watched him respond. I literally watched him respond at the other table, right? Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm like getting a little a little lurky here, but you know, I'm, I'm figuring it out. And 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 so I had a meeting with him, and you know, I just kind of threw it out there, like like I, you know, I'm starting this company, and you know, I'm thinking about raising some money, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, and uh, sure enough, you know, he talked about investor FOMO, right? And uh, I had had a meeting with the guy who owned the club too. You know, hey, I want to get your advice on this. You know, what do you what do you think? <laughs> At the end of the meeting, he said, you know, how can I how can I be of help? And I said, oh, man, just nothing. You know, I just wanted you're a smart guy. And, and I just wanted you to get some advice. You know, thank you very much. And stood up, shook his hand and walked away. That dude called me the next day and he said, yeah, I'd like to invest in your company, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it was like a playbook, you know. And yeah. So then I went back to the guy, you know, the podcast guy. And I said, well, you know. This guy Michael over here, he, you know, he's investing, <laughs> and then the and the, the FOMO, you can just see it you know, busting out of his mouth over here. He's like, he's like, well, okay, uh, maybe me and Michael could split the round. You know, man, I'm raising a half a million dollars, and Michael just he offered me fifty thousand. You know, and split the round. We're a little shy on that, you know. So <laughs> I, said, I was like, I don't know, you know, investor dude, I'm gonna. I'll have to ask Michael to see what Michael thinks, you know, so I go back to Michael and I'm like, Hey man, I'm not trying to hustle you here, but you know, Jason said, if you wanted to split the round, he would do it. And then Jason's like, Michael's like, yeah, man, of course we'll do it. We'll split the round. And, you know, so he went from 50 to 250 in just this conversation. And so I raised this money, right. And I, I started this company and, and it was hard, man, it's hard. It's hard. You know, I talk about all this fun stuff, but there's days when it is hard, you know, and you ride these ups and downs and one day you're getting the lake house and the next minute you are losing your apartment, you know, that kind of thing. It's, like, it's so hard. And, and uh, we struggled for a while, you know, but we struggled and, and, uh, and then I ended up, gosh, I went to restoration hardware for a minute. You know, that guy wanted to want me to go and, and, uh, you know, he kind of, he kind of bought me out. Right. And, you didn't want to buy companies that I already got a brand, you know, it's called restoration hardware. I don't need your, your little thing, you know, and I said, well, you know, so my company said, well, why don't you come and work here and we'll pay you a lot of money. And, but I kept the company running for a minute on the back, on the side, you know, over there. Right? <laughs> so, so then I sold the company to, to, uh, to one of restoration hardware's, um, uh vendors and mm. and uh, then i had to leave restoration hardware and then go run run that company and and really i sold the company to one of the companies that i was trying to disrupt right and and man that is a that's a different deal you know these these big mega furniture companies with you know a lot of old people you know and they got they got their own ways and you know i'm kind of young and whatever i'm you know <laughs> i'm kind of getting in there and rustle around a bit and, uh, and, and it, you know, it was tough, but, but it was good. So I got that exit, you know, that, that exit that I needed and, and, uh, made, made a little bit of money, gave everyone their money back, gave them a little extra, not a ton. I didn't sell for a ton. We were failing, you know, really. Um, but we were, we were, I was able to maneuver it in a way to put the company in a position in another big factory, right. In a place where, where they could turn it into something. And, yeah. and over three years, we built it into a, a pretty big deal. And, 
And uh, I guess that's probably what brings me here today, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, how, how I got here this far. And, and uh, I've recently left, uh, just recently, to, uh, to move on to the next thing. And, and uh, you know, I completed that goal. The goal was, you know, build a company, disrupt, sell the company. And I'm off, I'm off to the next thing. Mm. Mm. And what's the next? First of all, I'm going to tell you, you have to not just watch the movie Catch Me If You Can. You need to listen to the actual man. If you put, if you put, if you put "Catch Me If You Can" um, okay. interview, and he comes up, you're gonna hear it. it is so kind of like how you're talking. Like, I found out where the guy went. I went. I went there. I'm. I'm at the club, and I'm parlaying it. I'm talking to this person. <laughs> yeah. I'm, talking to this person. I'm yeah. getting it. Yeah. it, it it's kind of like that same same vibe yeah. man i'm loving it you gotta you you have to you know it's it sounds a little funny you know here i am like i gotta follow this guy I didn't follow the guy but i you gotta put yourself in position in life to be able to you know i i truly believe we make our own luck right and and what that means is put yourself in a position where you can capture you know whatever whatever's out there and if, if you're still just at home looking on linkedin for a job like, man, no one's going to hire you off that. Like, you know, you, you got to go make your own job. You got to go, you know, do it enough, get yourself out there enough so that you can do it. And I think that's, that's the moral of that whole story was, you know, I, all, that was very condensed. It took years to do that, but, but it, it, it put myself in this position where I could, where I could make it and, and, um, and succeed. But I still had to do the work, right? Like, you know, I got all this money, but I had to make this business. <laughs> like that's a different yeah. deal. Like it's hard. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And that's, and that's the and that's the we went through something similar and we um we in the very beginning stages of something like that. And people don't understand, like when you do that capital raise, you know, like, oh man, I got all this money. But then now just that's responsibility. Dude, like, dude, now, no, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> responsible to my investors yeah. to turn this around into something, yeah. even though. They understand it's a risk and all that kind of stuff, but you don't want to be that guy. They're like, "Hey, we just gave this guy half a quarter million dollars, and this guy did nothing with it, right?" We got. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. be that person, yeah. you know. So is that that's a responsibility on your shoulder? Um, I don't. You don't see it as a huge. Oh yeah, we got all the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, how do I turn this thing turn this thing around? How do I really make money now? And how do I use this tool? Yeah, yeah. And having having that money does not like it. It doesn't actually make money right it, it, yeah. it it's a help but yeah. it's it's the work that you do you know it's the work you put in and the moment you kind of close your eyes on it it evaporates <laughs> you know yeah. and so, exactly. so it's really yeah. hard and and yeah. um, it takes it takes a bit and you know and i along the way you know i, I at my old company bench made modern you know we sold sofas right and and I, I wanted to make the best sofa possible, right? How can I make the best sofa possible? I, I crowned myself the sofa king, right? And I, and I, and I, you know, if you look at my Twitter page at Edgar Blazona, uh, pinned to the top of my Twitter page is calling out all furniture companies, and it says, "Hey, you know, other sofa companies, how about we old school battle? You send your sofa to a writer, I'll send my sofa to a writer, and whoever has the best sofa wins." And the loser crowns the other guy the sofa king. Step Ooh. up. And not one single person has stepped up. And I know they all follow me. I know they follow me, but they don't step up, right? And and you know, that's because I kind of put my money where my mouth is, right? And I'm like, I'm gonna call some people out because I have the confidence in, in what we were building and, and what we were doing. And and uh, you know, kind of fun too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's wow. up for the new endeavor? If you could talk about it, we'd love to hear yeah. it. Let our audience, let our travelers, yeah. we call them travelers, let our travelers hear about it. Yeah, yeah. I um I'm gonna I'm gonna head into the outdoor furniture business. Mm. Um, you know, I one of the things when I was at Restoration Hardware is I learned that it's a it's a big business. It's grown into a yearly business. It's not seasonal like it used to be at the at the higher end, I should say. Yeah. At the higher end, people are, you know, they're building houses, they're moving into houses, and they need outdoor furniture. They need to decorate that area. And uh, and so it's a year-round business and it and it and it seems to be a pretty good business. And so you know, I had to call up some some old friends, you know, and the, at these older, bigger factories, you know, around the world, you know, hey, remember me, you know, and they do, and and uh, I ate your pie, I ate your pie, yeah, right? I ate that blood pudding, 
<laughs> right? Dude, only once did I did that. The other time, I'm like, no way. No. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I'm I'm uh, headed to the outdoor furniture business and I'm going to do it all over again, you know, and here we go again. You know, it's, I mean, I got a lot of tools in my pocket now, but man, it, it, it's, uh, it does feel a little daunting, frankly, you know, yeah. to, yeah, to just do. start all over again. Yeah. If uh, I can suggest something for the yeah. outdoor. Yeah. Every outdoor furniture. I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, I'm looking in your background still. I don't know if I can take your advice. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Now, you didn't see my outdoor, though. You didn't yeah. see my outdoor. It's way <laughs> back. <laughs> I mean, you know. You take my novice. Take my novice yeah. <laughs> advice. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Every, every outdoor furniture, their cushion always says UV resistant. Yeah. And they always fade yeah 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 so there's this there's this stuff called sunbrella right it's an amazing it's a uh it's an amazing uh, fabric uh unfortunately it's an expensive fabric and uh you know from the looks of it i feel like you maybe went for the cheaper of the of the two so <laughs> so no uh, you know but it is it's it's a very expensive fabric um it's an amazing thing uh, you can you can uh, pressure wash it wash it you can bleach it you can do all of those things and and so uh, we'll 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 do a umbrella uh, there's some other versions of umbrella now um, mm -hmm. but but really nothing is fully UV umbrella is the closest people don't realize like in their houses you know your cushions like you have your sofa you know close to the window that one cushion closest to the window oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. a different color for sure and, yeah yeah and, uh, always. Always, you know. Yeah, they. Uh, I'm, you, so we have to, you know, as you you grow and you get this business off the ground. I know, I I have no doubt that it's going to do well for you, man. Just because of, just I've only met you now for it was been for, <laughs> forty minutes, and and I just have to get a sense from you of you're a go getter, really want to make things happen, and with just the experience that you have now to date, to be able to charge forward and build something, yeah. full confidence in you, and and. I definitely want to keep uh, close contact with my wife. She is she is going to be we're we're going to be doing our our outside uh, outside portion of our house yeah. start next year. So okay. uh, she's that that's going to be the first thing. And I can't he's I can't build follow Marlon's recommendation. He's going to build it. He's going to build it. I'll buy it from you. He's going to build it. Yeah, he'll yeah. build it. All right, all right. Well, you show him. Show him not just tell him. You know, use the good fabric, not the yeah. cheap stuff. That's oh important. yeah, we're gonna be keeping in track, man. Keeping, keeping all right. In track so I can. Yeah, I'd it. like that. You know, I'd, I'd like that. I I think it's an interesting journey. I and I, you know, I want to remind everyone out there that that you know Mark Zuckerberg, Elon, you know, all these names that we all know. And they've been working on their companies for 10, 20, you know, plus years. years. Yeah. You know, it, those guys didn't just happen overnight. Right. And, Correct. and I think we forget that. And I think as entrepreneurs, we forget that as well. And um, so, you know, I, I know this is going to take me a while and, and, and I'm aware of that. And, and you're right. I do have the tools. I, I have the knowledge. I've, I've, luckily I've stayed in the same business for this long. Right. I, I, I have people I can call and and get yeah. some help from, but it's going to take time. And yeah. but I think that's an interesting story, right? I think that journey is interesting. Uh, um, yeah. Whether it's mine or or someone else's is there's so many ups and downs. And as that entrepreneur, I can't explain. People ask me, you know, what what kind of advice can you give me, right? And the first thing I say is, don't let don't ride the highs too high, and the yeah. lows too low. Come on now. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. literally in the same day, yeah. Yeah. you know, you're you're running along and all of a sudden someone calls you and you're like, Yeah, we got me, it. I know. And That's then the me, next minute, the phone company calls you and says, You owe four thousand dollars and pay today. And and you're like, I'm going out of business if I pay it. So I haven't been paying the whole time, you know? And so <laughs> Suddenly you're out of business and, and all that all happened in the same day. And now you're real low, you know, and, and uh, so if you can, 
you can kind of ride the middle, you know, and, and find that, find that decent, you know, middle ground. Uh, I think it, I think it works. So there'll be some middle ground. Um, I'm happy to share it. There'll be some ups and I'm happy to share those. And, and I'm definitely, I'm willing to show the downs too, because it, it, it it's a, uh, it's a lot as well. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because that usually goes to the question we ask our guests when we're closing of, you know, if you can go back to that young person that, you know, in, is in that apartment, you know, knowing what you know now, what would you, what would you share with him for like 60 seconds? God, and, okay. um, yeah. Okay. I know you gave yeah, I don't know. Up, I, I shared it all, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got it. That's what I'm saying. You already answered the question. Yeah. I want to reframe it for the guests. Like that's yeah. that re- retrospective uh, thought, like, especially the highs and lows, man. I, Marlon and I, we've experienced this over and over. We have people that are connected with us that, they're they're really on that roller coaster, and I'm just like, dude, it's not being jaded. It's just like, just ride the this ride the wave, man. Like, just stay in yeah. that mid ground. You don't get don't get too excited, don't yeah. because that wave is gonna crash. All waves yeah. crash, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and just be this. Oh, expect it, right? Yeah. And just go 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 across it. And the, it. the hope is the hope is that you know your curve is slowly yeah ramping up, right? You know. That that's the hope versus shoot to the skies and then straight yeah. down to the to the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And remember, remember, we make our own luck, right? We I love that. Luck. Like you're not just a lucky person. I mean, you put yourself in a position to be to to receive, you know, the luck. But but you made that right. And and I think I think that's maybe what I would tell myself then i mean maybe i didn't know that then i I was too busy trying to get the lake house you know next week right and and you know and and i guess that kept me going but but i would say that in a in a in a day like like in this world today you know we make our own luck and so do the things that, that you have to do to shine right that's that's the key all right a little bit of shine you know when when uh well, you know, maybe it's too long of a story, but I, I no, think I love your stories. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll share you a quick little thing of what I, I when I when I made Benchmade, right? I thought, what can I do to shine, right? A little bit of shine, you know. No press person, you know. You think about the press, and I've been in in all the press, New York Times, and all that stuff. That's that's the golden ticket right there, the New York Times. And and every company thinks that they have enough to to you know to shine to get into the new york times well you don't right there's 100 furniture companies that are great there's 100 restaurants that are great all these things right that are great and so i decided what can i do so i made i I decided to make a robotic sofa display machine right almost like a like a you know like a sofa delivery machine you walk into this little store this little hybrid store and you flip through an ipad and you you search or you, you find your furniture and this robotic arm grabs grabs the furniture off the wall and brings a love seat and puts it down in front of your feet and allows you to sit on it and touch and feel it right and if you want another one you go back to the ipad and put it back you know and and so I was building these little teeny hybrid stores, little furniture boxes, you know, that, that had this machine. If you go to, if you search Benchmade Modern Robot on YouTube, you can find this machine. There's early, there's videos of us, you know, testing this, this machine. And, and uh, Petunia was our robot's name. And, and uh, but so that little bit gave me enough to shine past you know, the, the other furniture guys. And it wasn't a gimmick, right? It wasn't that flappy thing out front that says, you know, open, you know, it wasn't that it was enough that it, that it, it, it allowed people to think like, Oh, look, that's something different. I want to, I want to see it. I want to write about it. Right. And, and, and so, so the New York times wrote about it, right. That wasn't luck, right. I put myself in that position to be able to to give them what they wanted and receive that back, to receive that luck back, and and uh, again, I, I I I can't put enough emphasis on that. You gotta you gotta show up and and um and and, and to receive you know what's out there. Two things before Rick close it out, um, because we want to respect your time. Um, two things. 
you said one thing about Jeff Bezos, uh, about these guys that we all look up, look up to, and people don't remember yeah. Jeff Bezos was on Wall Street, sold what he had, moved across um, country. Amazon was a bookstore before yeah. it is what it yeah, is yeah. today, yeah. and those yeah. are long. And we, we a lot of times people will just look at the success. They like to say, "Oh, the third or second richest man in the world, one hundred and something, ninety something billion dollars." Da, 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 da. But they yeah. don't remember that story, just like you said. Yeah. Second, Elon, Elon, Elon was sleeping on my first invest, investor sofa, Jason sofa. Elon was sleeping on that sofa, you know, way back, you know, before before he had anything, you know. And mm-hmm. those guys, you know, they power through it, you know. He, he, Elon's not my favorite right now, but he's always getting a little bit out there. But but I like his success story and yeah. and yeah. Uh, and you know and, and how he got there. Yeah. And the second thing is you know you know your story is one like this it's a saturday and you i've already watched everything in netflix right and mm-hmm. i'm like oh uh, there's this one last movie all right i'll watch it but then when you press it you can't stop watching yeah yeah yeah, story. yeah. that's yeah. your story it's, yeah it's, it's it's captivating and i yeah. love the way how you're 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 your ingenuity not just in how you do business but how you place yourself in the spot, just like you said, create your own luck. It's something that a lot of um, people nowadays, everybody just thinks if I go on Instagram, somebody should see me and that's it. They don't understand the stuff that you're talking about, right place, right time, research and dive. Where does he want to go? Okay, what does he like? Hey, I looked at that. Oh, people sit on his chair. Oh, I can't, you understand? All that kind of stuff is it, 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 it is what took you to the next yeah, level. Yeah. And, it's um, not, just, it's, it's not, you're, you're welcome. I, and I appreciate you giving me the time to tell that story. And I, and I, and I hope everyone can, can hear, you know, it's not about finding their email address, you know, you know, testing a thousand emails, you know, Elon at Tesla.com, Elon M at Tesla.com. You know, it's not about finding their emails to get, you know, to write them this long winded email about how you can help them. It's not about that. Uh, you know, we all get those emails over and over and over again. And, and uh, it's really about putting yourself out there and, and uh, having faith in yourself and, and all that. So anyway, I appreciate you, you recognizing that. Thank you very much. And, and I appreciate you having me on your show tonight. It, it's, um, it's been fun to tell the stories for sure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure it's been- and a pleasure. Uh, I don't want to leave without you sharing. I know you transitioned to a new company now, but if people, yep. where could people like to find you or, yeah, or yeah. What, what's the flare or sign signal to know that hey, that's where he's going to be? Like, uh. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start talking about it on 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 my Twitter account, Edgar Blazona. Yeah. Um, again, going back to the Elon thing, you know, I might not be on Twitter for that long. We'll see how that guy, you know, <laughs> what that guy does over there. Uh, but uh, you know, you can find me. You know, Edgar Blazona. Google me. Um, you can find me all over the internet, uh, and I will for always be Edgar Blazona at LinkedIn. Uh, that that's a and it's I, I'm, my messaging machine is open there, and you know, you know, fire away. So you can you can definitely find me there forever. Love it, man. Love it. Well, travelers, um, man. Thank you for sticking around with us. Thank you for joining us for another show, Edgar. Man, we really really enjoyed this episode, you have no idea, you know, the state I was in before this episode and before you came on, man. So I really appreciate your energy, your story, right. uh, very inspirational for me, uh, I know, and I know for Marlon as well, and for the travelers that 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 come and like listen with us every single week. So travelers, thank you again for joining us for this week of the Success Journey Show. And we'll see everyone again next week at the same time, same place on this show. Everyone have a good one. Peace. I want love. Thank you. You've been listening to The Success Journey Show, where your dreams, drive, determination, and diligence are the foundation to success. For more information, check out thesuccessjourneyshow.com. The Journey Squad is here helping you to your destination. 